Follow along with me reading from the King James this morning. Matthew 3, verse number 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent you, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he... John the Baptist, who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah, saying, The voice of the one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his clothing of camel's hair, and a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan. Verse 6, and they were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance and think not to say within yourselves we have Abraham to our father for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham and aren't you glad God raised up Gentiles he raised up you and I as children praise God and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees therefore every tree which brings not forth good fruit is thrown down and cast into the fire Pay attention to verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he, speaking of Jesus Christ, who comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Glory to God. Now turn with me to Acts chapter 18. And I want to read in verse number 24. Acts 18 and verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, was an eloquent man. He was mighty in the scriptures and he came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in the spirit, he spoke and taught diligently the things of the Lord. Pay attention here knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Father, I thank you for your word today. I pray that it will speak to every heart and change lives in this place. God, I pray today that you will consume us in the fire of the Holy Spirit. God, we need the burning presence of the Lord in our lives. We need the burning presence of the Lord every morning that we wake up, every time we witness, every time we do ministry, every time we face a trial or a challenge. We need the Holy Ghost fire that I'm preaching about this morning. I pray that you will touch us and you'll baptize us all afresh and anew. And all God's people said, Amen. Now I learned a word in Mexico a few years ago. I don't know much Spanish. I've been to Mexico 20-something trips and I've not learned very much. You'd think I'd know more than hola and Jesus and, and burrito and taco, but I don't know much. Uh, I've learned holy, santo, santo, santos, holy, holy, holy. But I also, one of my favorite words I've learned is the word for fire. The Spanish word for fire is fuego. And this morning, just to keep everybody on the edge of your seat and keep you with me today, every time I say fuego, I want you to shout out, ooh, hot, 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 okay? So it doesn't matter when I say it, where I say it in the message. If I say fuego, <laughs> you're going to shout, ooh, hot, 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 all right? And the, and the media people, Carmen's going to be ready. And every time I say it, she's going to hit that slide. For those of you that aren't listening, maybe you'll be watching. So every time I say fuego, you'll know what to do. 
Praise God. How many of you are intrigued by fire? Let me see your hands. You like fire. You've played with it. You enjoy fire. Fourth of July comes around and you spend more money on fireworks than you do on Christmas presents on Sunday morning. All right. I see those hands. Glory to God. People love fire. Some people are scared of fire. Some people enjoy playing with fire. Some people burn things down. I've always been intrigued with fire, even since I was a little kid. Matter of fact, when I was just about Macy's age, maybe not even quite Macy's age, maybe just four years old, uh, I, had, I had found one morning, early in the morning, I had woke up, my parents were still asleep in their bed, and I had found a lighter. Uh, you know, that's never good. This was before they put childproofs on. On those lighters. It's never good for mom and dad to be in bed and a four-year-old to find a lighter to play with. And I was so intrigued by being able to make that, make that flame come out of that little lighter. And I found myself at the bottom of my parents' bed and I thought, you know, this would be, this would be interesting if I was able to light their blankets on fire. Uh, they, they, they would think that was so cool. And that is exactly what I did at four years of age. I took that lighter and I went down and I lit the sheet of their blanket and it began to burn up the back side of their bed coming towards their feet while they're still sleeping and eventually they woke up and it went chaotic in that place they come out of that dead sleep trying to put that fire out the fire trucks were there shortly and uh, and from that day forward I've always had something with fire I've always played with fire it drives crystal crazy I like to take lighters and pour the gas into my hand and then light it and blow it up in the dark. I, I like to, I love to, I love to burn dust. There's nothing more exciting than to see an old dusty table and just put some gas on that with that lighter and set that on fire and watch that dust consume and burn up. I don't know if you all heard, but back in the late 80s, there was a fire that about took uh, out Baxter County. And I want to tell you that story this morning. I was, I was just nine or ten years old and I I was playing way out. We lived out in the in the woods there, and I was out in the woods, and uh, you could barely see the house from where I was at, and I was gathering up leaves, glory to God, and I was burning some leaves, you know, setting me a little campfire out there in the woods, and had me a good fire going, and, and, my, and my mom come out, and she said, Dwayne, it's time to go. We're going to eat. And I could hear her shout, so I said, praise God, go and eat. I didn't take time to put the fire out. I just jumped up, ran, and got in the car and went to eat. I'll never forget it as long as I live. When we got back from eating about two hours later, and we pulled down our road, and as we were slowly getting closer and closer to our house, my parents were saying, it looks like the woods are on fire. Can you see that smoke? As we got a little closer, you could see the flames. You could see the fire. As we pulled in, we realized that our entire backyard woods was consumed with fire. My mom jumped out of the car, ran into the house, called the fire department. We lived out in the country and they told her it was going to be X amount of dollars for them to come out and put that fire out. I'll never forget her saying, well forget that, let it burn. And she hung up the phone on them, glory to God. She said, let it burn. Now, I'm hoping they're not listening to this on the website because if they are, to this day they still do not know that I was the one that started that forest fire that just about took over Baxter County. Glory to God. My favorite fire story, <laughs> as if those weren't, <laughs> about set my parents on fire, about set our house on fire. My favorite one, I had a friend over. His name was Eddie and my parents were getting ready to go shopping, had to go grocery shopping, and they said, come on, we're going to go grocery shopping. And I, and I said, can I please, can we please just stay home? We don't want to go grocery shopping. She had never let me stay home by myself up to that point. And I just continued to beg, and I said, we'll be good, we'll stay in our room, we'll play with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, praise God. Alex, I thought I'd get an amen out of you on that one. Man. <laughs> We'll just, you know, we'll just hang out over here. And, uh, uh, you know, just, just please let us stay home. And she finally agreed to it. Well, you know, she was gone and this was before cell phones and all that kind of stuff. And we decided we'd go out in the yard and play a little bit. 
go out in the shop back there and play a little bit. All of a sudden it hit me. I remembered something. I remembered that a couple months ago from 4th of July, my dad still had a couple grocery bags. Remember the, gr the brown grocery sacks? A couple grocery sacks of bottle rockets that he had bought on a 75% off sale after the 4th of July. And I remembered that it was out in that shop. So I went and got those two bags and I said, we can have us a bottle rocket war, glory to God. So we shot off a few bottle rockets at each other and that got real boring. I said, wouldn't it be fun if we did this inside? <laughs> we could dodge behind couches. We could have these bottle rockets. Man, they'll hit the walls and bounce off the walls. It'll be like a war zone. And that's exactly what we did. We went into the house and began shooting bottle rockets after each other. All of a sudden I looked at the clock. I said, they're going to be back in about 10 or 15 minutes. We better get this thing cleaned up. And I went through. We picked up every stick. We got every stick out of that house. It never dawned on me that bottle rockets have a unique smell. <laughs> I thought I was good by getting all the sticks out, glory to God. It never dawned on me that my mom's going to smell that immediately. Well... I'm not going to tell you the rest of that story. I'll just leave it to your imagination what happened when mama got home. Let's just say it still hurts today thinking about it, praise God. Now I've always thought that in the Bible, in these 60-something books of the Bible, they ought to have one more book at the very end and call it the book of stupid. Because there's a lot of stupid stuff that people did in the Bible. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I mean, you read some of this stuff and you think, that was stupid. And they ought to just put all them stories in that book and that book would preach better than any other book. I'm telling you, I could write a book and call it the book of stupid, some of the crazy stuff that I've done in my life with fire. And this morning, we're going to talk about a fire that does more than just burns and leaves behind rubble or ashes. We're going to talk about a fire today that will consume you to the very core of your being and will set you ablaze and make you passionate for the work of the kingdom of God. It's a fire that never goes out. It's a fire that people will come and watch burn. It is a fire, friend, that will change your life. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fuego. Yes, it is hot, hot, hot. Here in Matthew chapter 3, our opening text, we're reading about water baptism. John the Baptist came. He baptized people unto repentance. What were they repenting from? Not so much repenting from sins, but having a turnaround in their life. Getting ready for the kingdom of God. Getting ready for the Messiah to come. They had to change their way of thinking. The Messiah is coming, and he was baptizing them in water. And that baptism was, 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 a, was a physical example of that when they went down into the water the old life went down and it died it stayed and when they came up they came up to a new life a new life that would show what John the Baptist said fruits of repentance and he's baptizing people they're lined up one after another he's baptizing them and all of a sudden he speaks to them and he says there's one greater than I who's coming and he won't baptize you in water but he's going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire now something this crowd understood about baptism that you and I might not really understand, it all comes from the Greek word baptism in the Greek, the Greek word baptizo, which means to immerse. It means to cover. It means to soak. It means to dunk, if you will. Listen, John the Baptist wasn't sprinkling little people with holy water. Hello now, church. He was putting them under the water, and when they came up, they were totally soaked from head to toe. There wasn't a dry head, hair on their head. I've baptized some women who have said can you just put me all the way down but not let my hair get down. No friend, we're putting you all the way in that water. We're going to shake you a little bit while you're down and when you walk up them steps, water's going to be flowing down your backside. Glory to God. We're soaking you because that's what baptism was. Baptizo. Soak them. Dunk them. Cover them. So John looks at them and he says just like I'm soaking you in this water, just like I'm covering you in this water, just like you're being immersed, you're being covered in this water there's one greater that's about to show up and he's gonna soak you in the fire of the Holy Ghost 
He's going to cover you from head to toe. There won't be a hair on your head that won't be inflamed with the power and the fire of the Holy Ghost. He is going to cover you, glory to God. And I'm here to tell you today, the same Jesus that came and baptized his disciples in the fire of the Holy Ghost still wants you and I covered, dunked, soaked, call it what you want, consumed by his fire. Somebody ought to give him praise and glory today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, baptism in the fire, baptism in the Holy Spirit, literally means he wants to set you on fire. You just thought the Bible was boring. New Testament gets real interesting right at the beginning. That Jesus, God's Son, wants to set you on fire. He wishes that you would catch on fire and burn. We're talking about fire. Now the fire of God falls throughout the entire Bible. There are many stories about the fire of God, about fire. And God's fire is used in a few different ways. I don't have time to preach on all that today. I'll give you some examples. But the fire of God can represent the judgment of God in the Bible. The fire of God can represent the holiness and purification of God. The fire of God coming to burn out, to purify, to cleanse, if you will. Refined by the fire. Gold being refined in the fire. And the fire of God in the Bible refers to Holy Ghost baptism that we're going to talk about today. But there's many times where God's fire was poured out. I think of stories like in Genesis 19, Sodom and Gomorrah. These cities that were, that were living in, living in a, in a, in a, in a sin, living in a, in a condition that, that the Bible calls an abomination. You've got men sleeping with other men. You've got, you've got uh, women with other women, kind of like the United States of America today, living in a state of an abomination. People like Bruce Jenner, who now wants to dress up like a woman. And before long, every public place is going to have a law that we have a transgender restroom for those kind of people. It's not a new thing. Deuteronomy says a man should not put on a woman's clothing. Listen, that same spirit, that same demon was possessing people back when Moses wrote Deuteronomy. Is anybody in this place here this morning? It's not changed. It's the same evil. But God had enough of it and God judged the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, this graceful loving Jesus, this graceful God that we worship and serve decided that he would judge those cities by raining down fire on them. Now can you imagine this with me for a moment? Fire falling from heaven like rain would fall, fire coming down and consuming the enemies of God, burning the people up. People people falling falling down burning in this sulfur, in this in this fire of God. Interesting. You know, we read the Bible and, and, and we see these kind of things. We see God, God literally consuming cities, judging them with the fire. We see in like Exodus chapter 3, the Lord appeared to Moses in a bush and that bush was consumed with fire. That bush was set on fire but not burning up. The Lord was in that bush. The Lord was speaking from that bush set on fire. We see stories like in Leviticus chapter 9. You ought to read it where fire came out of the presence of the Lord. Psalms mentions that over and over again. One of my favorite stories is in 1 Kings chapter number 18 when all the prophets were called to Mount Carmel. The prophets of Baal and then the prophet of the one true God, Elijah. And they were all called there to prove who the one true God is. And there was, there was many prophets of Baal. Baal means other gods, worshiping other gods. There were many there for, for, for false gods, but there was only one, Elijah, there for the one true God. And Elijah says, listen boys, I have a good idea. Let's get us two bulls. You take one, you prepare the altar. You prepare the wood, you prepare it for sacrifice. I'll take the other one and I'll prepare the altar. I'll rebuild the altar of God. I'll prepare the wood and prepare it for sacrifice. And we will pray to our God and the God, listen to this, and the God who answers by fire. Glory to God. Listen to me what I'm preaching on today. We serve a God who still moves by fire. He still answers
answers by fire today. He said, Elijah said, the God who answers by fire is the one true God. Praise the Lord. He is the one true God. God, glory to God. Listen to me. You know how you know God is God in tag church? When the fire of God falls. When people are consumed with the anointing and the power of God. That's when you know God's in the house. That's when you know God's in the church. That's when you, that's when you know God's moving, glory to God. Oh, I love the fire of God. So these prophets of Baal, they start doing their dances. They start doing their circles. They start doing their chants. Calling on their God. Baal to answer by fire. And they walk around the sacrifice. They run around it. And Elijah's just having a good time with this. He's just sitting back watching this. It's a spectacle. And he begins to mock them. Read your Bible. Elijah begins to mock the prophets of Baal. He begins looking at them and saying, well, Did your God go on vacation? He must be at Disney World this week. Glory to God. Because y'all been over there singing and chanting and dancing and ain't nothing falling from heaven. He must be riding some roller coaster at Six Flags because he ain't here. Glory to God. And and he mocks him a little bit more. He says, who knows? Maybe your God's asleep. Maybe maybe the alarm clock hasn't gone off yet. Maybe, Maybe he's snoozing. Maybe he's in a deep sleep because he's not answering by fire. Can I just pause and say something right now? When you have a church house that's not experiencing the fire of God, that's what it looks like. It looks like God's not there. God's not moving. God's not present. What this world needs to see, they don't need to see another coffee shop. They don't need to see another smoke show. Listen to me. They don't need to see another dance around an altar. What they need to see is the fire of the Holy Ghost that consumes the people of God, the sacrifice of God. He mocks and takes it a little further. He says, maybe your God's going to the bathroom. That's what he does. Maybe he's sitting on the pot. Maybe he's at the toilet. Glory to God. It's good to be back in the United States of America too, speaking of toilets. (laughs) Some people kiss pavements and kiss green grass when they get back. Never mind. That's for you, Brent. Amen. Amen. Man, I forgot my handkerchief and I'm sweating to death up here. Glory to God. Will you run them off and see if there's one just sitting on my bookshelf or something? Can't use Kleenex as they start coming off. Then you look, look like you got leprosy. He's got one. He's got a big one. Oh, man. Oh, praise the Lord. It says, Pastor. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Never mind. Man. Susie, I want you to look at this. Take a good look at this, okay? My sewing lady right over here. But I could actually use something a little bit bigger. You haven't used this, have you? And blown your nose or anything with you. (laughs) You wasn't up there, you know. Thank you, brother. Oh, man. Praise God. Been hot ever since I got back to USA. It's hot here. Ain't hot down there. There's no humidity or nothing down there. It's hot. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. Amen. Them toilets down in Mexico, you know. You can't flush stuff down there in Mexico. That's why if it's yellow, you let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. Hey, it ain't lunchtime yet, so I ain't ruining anyone's meal. Someone's still sitting there going, if it's yellow, let it mellow. Maybe your God's on the toilet. And they're chanting. They're doing their religious running around. And all of a sudden he says, time's up. And he prayed a very simple, short prayer. His prayer was basically, Oh God, show these people who you are. It wasn't very deep. Anybody here could have prayed it. It came from a prophet's mouth, but it wasn't in King James language. There weren't any these and thous and those, and it didn't have any long Greek words. It was just, oh God, show these people that you are God. Hallelujah. And when he said amen, now listen to this. Before he prayed, he took 
water and he soaked. He baptized in water the sacrifice and the wood. He soaked it. Not once, not twice, but three times. Speaking of the Trinity, glory to God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Speaking of being washed in the water, praise God. Water baptism. But water baptism wasn't enough. It had to be consumed with fire. That's why Jesus said, go and wait. You've been baptized in water. Now go and wait for the fire to baptize you. And he said, amen. And the fire of God fell and consumed the sacrifice, praise God. It burned it up, praise the Lord. It consumed it. I'm telling you today, he is the one true God. He is the God who answers by fire. Psalms 97 says a fire goes before God and burns up all his enemies. Fire stories all through the Bible. That's one of my favorite chapters. You ought to read it. Psalms 93. If you're taking notes, write it down. Read the whole chapter. You got something, someone coming against you, read Psalms 97. It'll bless your socks off, as we say in the South. Amen. Amen. Daniel chapter 3. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Three men. In the fire. But I see four. I see four. I see four. I see the Lord in the fire, in the midst with them. They come out of that unburned, untouched. Hebrews 12, 29 says our God is a consuming fire. Listen to me. God's going to consume your life if you'll let him. He's a consuming fire. Fuego. <laughs> yeah, the Bible's full of fire stories. But my absolute favorite one of all of them is Acts chapter 2. Turn there with me. Acts chapter 2, my favorite fire story in the Bible. Y'all take your time. Now, if you ever get bored with Acts chapter 2, you're in trouble. This is why the church is in trouble. They got bored with Acts chapter 2, brother. Acts chapter 2 wasn't enough. Let's add to it. Let's change it. Let's get rid of it. Whatever. They came away from Acts 2 and we got in trouble. The only thing we need to worry about around here is that John 3, 16 and Acts chapter 2. Everything else take care of itself. Did you hear me? John 3, 16 and Acts chapter 2 verse 4. And let everything else take care of itself. I love this fire story. Verse 1. When the day of Pentecost was fully come. That was the feast of Pentecost. Pentecost it was one of the seven Feast, seven festivals ordained by God and practiced by Israel every year. Okay? That's why we're called Pentecostals. Because God poured His Spirit out on that festival day called Pentecost. They didn't call them Pentecostals here. That was a tag that started about 100 years ago. Calling us, coming out of the Azusa Street Revival, Pentecostals. This day of Pentecost here in verse 1 took place 50 days after Passover. This is when Pentecost fell. 50 days after Passover. So Jesus rose again. If you've been watching AD, he rose and he spent some time in Christ encounters. People encountered him. Thomas touched him. He ate with them. He revealed himself. And eventually he gathered them together and he gave them the great commission, go and preach the gospel into all the world. And he ascended. We call it the ascension. How many of you saw the ascension on the AD? That was awesome. Seeing those clouds receive him. Seeing the angels in those clouds receiving him. They received him in their sight. I'm telling you, it was powerful. 
He ascended. But he told them right before he left, he said, Terry, wait in Jerusalem until you've been endued, until you've been clothed with the fire, the power of the Holy Ghost. So they went into the upper room. The Bible says in verse 1, they were all with one accord in one place. They didn't go to the temple where everybody else was at. They went to the upper room. That's where they had been meeting. That's where they had Passover together. It's where they were accustomed to being. Verse 2, look at this. And suddenly, out of nowhere, came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I'm listening for a sound to fill this place. I'm listening, for, I'm listening for a wind to start blowing through the church once again. I'm listening for the breath of God to breathe upon his people once again. I, I'm waiting and anticipating a wind to blow. I'm not talking about a gentle, breezy Sunday afternoon wind. I'm looking for a wind that will mess your hair up, ma'am. I'm looking for a wind that will blow you down. I'm looking for a wind you can't stand against. I'm looking for a wind that will consume you praise God because we got enough church people they just want a nice little gentle breeze I don't mind the move of God as long as it doesn't mess my agenda up as long as I can still get out of here at five till noon I don't mind the move of God and that three day revival about wore me out I don't know if I could ever do another one of those again I missed two days of work after it was over couldn't get the kids out of bed the next morning I'd really just like to stick with that Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for about an hour and a half just give me a little gentle breeze if that's where you're at I am so sorry for you I hurt for you because the church is lost and dead and falling into an apostate condition because we want a gentle breeze, not a mighty rushing wind. <laughs> Let a wind blow that will mess up our agenda, mess up our plan. Let a wind blow, friend, that will change circumstances. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them. Now look at that. Wait a minute. And it filled all the house. It didn't just stay in the upper room. It filled the downstairs where they were sitting. <laughs> this wind blew and it changed that region. Do you believe that God can bring a revival to this city that will do more than just let us have good little services? Because if that's all we're after, let's shut this thing down and go home. Do you, do you feel like there can be a move of God that can blow, that can shake a city, shake a region to where we don't just sit in here and keep it to ourselves, but we start bringing people back to the move of God. We start drawing them in. We start going out and telling people what God's doing. Verse 2 or verse 3. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. Every one of them. The exact number is unknown. 120, some say. But what's important is it wasn't just on the disciples. It fell on every one of them that was assembled in that room. The fire of God came in. The Bible says it sat on them. Now listen. I'm not looking for that to literally happen again. If it does, praise God. It never happened again in this book of Acts. It's the only time that happened. Can it happen again? Absolutely. I don't necessarily need to see the fire of God come and sit on anyone's head. But what I do believe is that same fire of God is still wanting to consume our lives and baptize us in the Holy Ghost and in His power. And look at verse 4. And they were all filled. Turn to your neighbor and say, all filled. All filled. They were all filled. 
with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. That's the initial physical evidence. Because that continued every time people were baptized in the fire of the Holy Spirit. The wind didn't always blow and the fire didn't always fall in the sense that you could see it. But they always spoke in other tongues. And that's why when God baptizes you in the Holy Ghost, you will speak in another tongue. Hello church. You will speak in tongues, praise God. Because that's what the Bible says will happen. The initial physical evidence. It says, as the Spirit gave them utterance. They didn't initiate this themselves. It was initiated by the Holy Spirit. And these languages were languages of heaven. They were languages from all over the world. God baptized them. Matthew 3 verse 11. Our opening text. He's going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. John the Baptist spoke about it before Jesus even began his public ministry. He spoke of what I'm preaching about today. So, let's start to bring this thing full circle this morning. Everybody look up here and listen. Let's start to connect some dots for us. Because so far we've got that pastor loves to play with fire and you better not leave him in your house with a lighter. Okay, we've got that down. We realize that God plays with fire too. He is fire. Preaching is like fire shut up in my bones. <laughs> this worship pastor is about to die. He's ready to be turned loose to preach. Because he's a preaching machine. He can lead worship all day, but there's something about that preaching. The prophet said it's like fire shut up in my bones. We realize that the fire of God fell on the day of Pentecost and that all that were assembled were baptized in that fire. But what about us? And what is the fire for? We've heard this, maybe you haven't. Some of you have heard it a hundred times and still ain't operating in the fire and power of God like you should be. We've heard enough messages on this. We ought, to, we ought to be healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons everywhere we go. So what's it for? How does it help my life? Why revival? Why be a church on fire? What's the point? Oh, there's a big one, church. There's a big point. I've had people say, well, isn't being saved enough? I mean, isn't that enough? I mean, I love Jesus and I'm going to heaven. Why do I need all this extra stuff? Because one day you're going to stand before that Jesus you love. And you're going to give an account of your life. And the first commandment is to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Go and wait till you've been filled and clothed with power from on high. And if you spent your whole life never caring about that, you're going to have to come up with something to tell him on that day. Why? Because we're all going to stand before the Lord and give an account for every soul, every person, every, every opportunity. And many people never take advantage of soul winning opportunities because they've not been consumed by the fire of God. Listen to me. The reason, when, and the Gwens know this, the reason when I was a teenager, I was radical. I was different. I bought a thousand book of hopes and passed on my, out on my campus. I stood up and preached to my entire school body one morning when I was a junior in high school. I led people people to the Lord. I was passionate. At 16, I started preaching the gospel. The reason isn't because I was well-groomed. My parents weren't Pentecostal. They weren't, they, weren't, they weren't born again. They didn't raise me in church. I wasn't well-groomed. I wasn't a third or fourth generation Pentecost. Listen to me. I didn't know. I didn't understand. I didn't know how many books there were in the Bible. I didn't know scripture. I didn't know a thing. All I knew is I had been touched by the fire of God and you couldn't shut me down. You couldn't shut my mouth. You couldn't stop me. There was something in me that went beyond who I am. It was the fire of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. The answer for some of you today is just get a good dose of the fire. Dead, sleeping, dried out Christians, the fire of God will change that in your life. 
You can't help yourself but tell people about Jesus. You can't help yourself but live passionately for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's why when I met Mackenzie, before I ever knew her testimony, I knew there was something about her. She had something different about her there at that Larry's Pizza. What was it? It was the fire of the Holy Ghost. Oh, I wish somebody say amen in this place. So no, being saved is not enough. You're called to be consumed in the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he gives you power. Acts 1.8 says, but you will receive power. Fuego. Yeah, you, you'll receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That word power is the word dunamis. You'll receive dunamis. Dunamis is where we get our word dynamite from. Oh, praise God. Well, I wish our pastor just calmed down a little bit. I, I just wish our worship pastor, pastor and his wife would just calm down a little bit. No, no, no. I want them to be so stinking consumed in the fire of God that they're, listen, dynamite, they're dynamic. They're dynamic. There's something about them. Not, not their talent, not their looks. The, the, the fire, the, the anointing, the Holy Ghost, something when they start singing, I can't help but praise God. Something when they lift their voice, I can't help but lift my voice with them. I want them dynamite, dynamic for the kingdom of God. Dunamis, the dynamite power of God. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to see some stuff start blowing up around here. Just exploding. Some of you, I'm going to preach to about 25 of you right now. The rest of you can just, just take a break. 25 of you, listen up. Because you do this to me all the time. You'll come up to me after service. All the time. Hardly a service goes by. One of you, 25, don't come up and say this to me. Oh, pastor, it was so good this morning. I just wanted to dance. I just, I, I just wanted to jump up and shout hallelujah, but I didn't. <laughs> pastor, I almost, I almost let it go this morning. You know something about dynamite? You know something about the explosive power of God? When you explode, there'll be people around you that will explode. When you break the ice, that fire will consume that ice. And it'll turn to a flowing river. Glory to God. Let some explosions happen. Oh, I so, I was talking to that cashier and she was telling me about her lower back pain and I just kept feeling I should lay hands on her, ask her if I could pray for it, but I didn't, Pastor. Remember, the rest of you can keep, just chill out, take a break, we'll finish, we'll close in just a minute, but I need to talk to about 25 of you. Just, just, just 25 of you, okay? <laughs> that power of God, that fire of God is on your life to give you authority and power to go ahead and say, ma'am, if you'll allow me to, I'll pray for you. The Bible says that if we place our hands on the sick, the sick will be healed. Will you allow me to place my hand on your forehead and ask God to heal you? Yes, I'd be happy for you to do that. And you begin to lay hands on them and dynamite happens, explosion happens, Holy Ghost comes down and heals them. I'm going to tell you, listen, we're talking about A.D. There's something different. I bet Peter and John on the way to the temple had passed that lame man in Acts chapter 3 250 times he had laid there begging. But there was something different about this day. Why? Because it was the day after Pentecost. They had been filled with the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost. And this time, when, yeah, yeah, this time, this time A.D. was different. This time when they see, he, he said, oh, sir, could you just give me a little money? How many times have they passed, that, passed him and not given him a thing? They stopped, Brother Gwen, this time, and they said, they said, 
silver or gold I don't have. Why? They were true Pentecostal preachers. Glory to God. We're broke, we're poor, we ain't got anything but what I do have. Here comes the dynamite. Here comes the Acts 1-8 power. Here comes the explosion. What I have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Pray. Dynamite. Dynamite. <laughs> Woo. Oh my. I'm telling you, there's so much rumbling in my spirit right now. I don't even know what to say. I got things coming in every direction. Man, just woo, I feel the power this morning. It's exploding inside of me as I'm talking, Brother Dennis. I'm like sitting here and I'm just so much rumbling right now in me. <sighs> I'm telling you, if you can get this today, you're 25, if you can get this. That power of God, that fire of God is on you to be witnesses unto Him. Amen? In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost, Little Rock, Arkansas, parts of the earth. Praise God. Pentecost happened, fire fell next too. Them guys... Gave it all away. Silver, gold, have a number. What I have, I give you. They gave it out. How many of you know you give it out? That's why I used in a revival two weeks ago. You need revival again today. Because I'd say probably every one of us gave out everything we had to give. You emptied yourself. They found themselves in Acts chapter 4 verse 31 needing to be rebaptized with the Holy Spirit. And they begin to seek God. God, we need your power. And the Bible says in Acts 4.31 that after they prayed... The place they were meeting in shook. There's that wind, glory to God. There's that shaking. It shook. Well, I've had people say, well, that wasn't literal. That was symbolic. That was spiritual. I don't care if it's literal, symbolic, spiritual, theological, exegetical. Hello now, scientific. It shook! It shook! Oh, God, let a shaking come once again. It says the place they were meeting in was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the Word of God with boldness. They witnessed. That power is for witness. That power is for you to do the works of God. Amen? Amen? That fire is for you to do miracles in the name of Jesus. Every time that Jesus sent out his disciples or sent out his followers to go and preach, he also gave them power. Acts 1.8. Authority to heal the sick and cast out demons. Matthew 10 verse 1. Jesus gave them power. That's what it's for, friend. It's not so you can start a worldwide healing ministry and get on TBN. It's for you to just go out where you go and do the works of God. Do the works of God. Now Monday night in Mexico, I preached that night and God was healing people all over the building. I had the microphone in hand and I was calling people's attention and I was saying, what's your need? And I mean, there was everything. And I'm over on this area right over here. And everybody, just about everybody in the place is looking over at us. There was a lady, her right arm and right leg would not move. She couldn't, it was just stiff as can be. And her right leg, same way. So she kind of walked, just, real stiff, couldn't lift that arm. So I bring everybody's attention to this lady. We're praying for her. God's healing her. Her arm's coming up. It's glorious. People are clapping, shouting. What I didn't realize, it wasn't the only explosion happening in the place. Because as this dynamite, Tiffany was going off, right in the middle, and I have no idea who was praying for this lady, or if anyone was. I don't even know, because my back was to her. But I turn around, and I see another dynamite. When I happen to turn around and look and watch this woman, oh, y'all got to see this. <laughs> Man, they hooked in there, aren't they? I turn around over my shoulder. Everybody's cheering and clapping over there. I turn around, hear more cheering and clapping over here. I go, well, what's going on over there? 
There was a dynamite going off, Pastor Mike. When I happened to turn and look, and here is where she was when I turned around. Coming out of her wheelchair. Dynamite power. Dunamis power. Oh, glory to God. Dunamis power. Praise God. I kept praying for that lady over there, trying to get her arm and leg to work in Jesus' name. Finally got it to work, and I thought, i got to go over there and see what's going on now. So I turned around, and I thought, all right. She was gone. She'd gone. And I, I with the microphone, said, where's the woman that got up out of the wheelchair? They said, she's way back there. She'd already walked. This was a long church. She'd already walked up the hill all the way to the very back row, and she was sitting on the very back row. I said, lady, get up and come back down here. She thought, I ain't walked in all my life. That's, that took everything I got to walk up there. I'm trying to get out the back door. You want me to come down? No, she got up, and she started coming down. I said, lift your knees up. Lift your knees up. She started lifting them knees up, coming down. It was an explosion of power. I'm going to tell you, God wants to baptize you in the fire so he can use you. He wants to use you for his glory. I watched Alex six months ago. Alex waved everybody. Six months ago in Mexico, God filled him to overflowing with the Holy Ghost. He became a holy roller. I've always heard of holy rollers. I've never seen one. In my time of growing up, people get slain in the spirit. I've seen people jerk. You know, I ain't ever seen the old, what the old timers call holy rolling. I mean, I've seen people lay out and stuff. You know, they say back in the day they used to roll through the sawdust. I used to think, that's just weird. <laughs> Six months ago, I see Alex down there in the floor, rolling outside on the dirt, the ground. We're not in a church with nice, pretty carpet. He's rolling on rocks and rolling on dirt, speaking in other tongues, praise God. Listen to me. Listen to me. He got up off that floor. And God had called him to preach the gospel. And six months later, on this trip, he got to stand up in the pulpit at the Wednesday night crusade. And he preached one of the most powerful messages I've ever heard about dying. About the seed falling to the ground and dying. He preached. If you could have seen me preach the first time I preached with an interpreter 20 years ago, it was horrible. I still remember the guy's name, Pablo. felt so sorry for him. This guy preached like he'd been preaching in Mexico with an interpreter for 20 years. I mean, just kept the flow, kept it good. Elia right there with them, just anointed of God. He gives the altar call. The altars fill up. The, place, the altars are packed. You can't even move around with people saying, I've got, a, I've, got, I've got a cyst growing out of my neck here. I've got arthritis in my knees. I've got lower back pain. I can't hear. I cannot see. I've got a crutch, glory to God. I need the power of God to touch me. And this man, and, and I walked around laying hands on people, and God used him. Why? Because he's been filled with the power of God. Fuego! Oh, hot, hot, hot. Let me close this thing. He wants to give you power. That fire will bring power. Let me close this thing. But it will also do something for you. Not just for others. It will do something for you. The fire, when it consumes you, it will do something great for you. Listen, everybody, please, as I wrap this thing up. It will help you live victoriously. I'm talking live with victory. When you're baptized in the fire and the power of the Holy Spirit, there's no longer any need to walk around as a spiritual foe or, or, or a defeated foe or a spiritual wimp. Did you hear me? You ain't got to walk around bound up anymore. You don't have to walk around oppressed any longer. Why? Because the theme of the book of Acts, the idea of A.D., what you see through the book of Acts is you see people that have every right to walk around oppressed with their head down, depressed, wanting to give up. You see believers being beat for saying that Jesus is alive. And we say it today, 2,000 years later, we know it. There's no threat to that. They were saying it a couple days after it happened. And people were, people were killing these guys. Jesus is alive. Shut that up. You can shut that up. He's not alive. You stole his body, you did something. He's not alive. Shut up. 
will kill you. If anybody had the right to walk around under attack, as we like to always say, as spiritual Christians, oh, I've been under attack. Hallelujah. If anybody had the right to walk around saying, you know what, I'm done. This, I cannot do it. It was these guys. But the book of Acts says they walked around with authority and power and boldness even to the point that when they took Stephen, the church's first deacon, but also preacher, a preacher, and they took him to stone him to death. Stephen, full of the fire of God, to his very last breath, magnifies and glorifies the name of Jesus. Are y'all here today? Two people like Peter and, or Paul and Silas put him in a prison. Put him in a prison. And that fire of the Holy Ghost right deep in their spirits calls them to sing out a song to the Lord and worship Him there. This fire will help you live in the face of tragedy, in the face of temptation. It will help you live in victory in the face of persecution. The fire makes the difference. The Holy Ghost makes the difference. So today we've lost the fire of God in the church so we try to fix everybody's problem. We want to send them to 700 weeks of whatever. One encounter with the Holy Ghost can change your life, friend. One experience with the baptism of fire and you'll never be the same again. You having hard times? We all will. We haven't even seen anything yet. All these churches that aren't preaching on the Holy Ghost and the baptism and the fire and they're filled with believers and preachers too that's not filled with the Holy Spirit. When persecution really comes to America, they ain't got anything to stand against it. I'm trying to help you to be dynamic, to be dynamite, even when all hell breaks loose around you. Is anybody here today? The fire of the Holy Spirit made A.D. possible. It was the fire of the Holy Spirit that anointed Peter to stand up on that day of Pentecost and preach the gospel. Well, I'm saved. Isn't that enough? Eternal life comes through Jesus Christ. Victory in life comes through the Holy Spirit. Did you catch that? Salvation comes through Christ. Victory in this life comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. Stand to your feet all over this building.